guys today. I was just reading in Psalms. I might share a little something with you later, but the very next chapter it says, David said, and I was glad when I came into the house of the Lord. So are we glad this morning to be here? Amen. I, I've met almost all of you, and some of you came in a little, little bit later, and I haven't got a chance to shake your hand and uh, introduce myself. But anyway, uh, my name's James. Obviously, I'm with Adult and Teen Challenge. I've got another staff member with me and some of our students as well. And look, we didn't come here to uh, put on a performance. We didn't come here to uh, with a certain agenda that, that we plan to achieve. We just came here to worship God with you. We came here to shout with you and praise and worship with you. And, uh, the scripture that I love says, uh, you know, if we lift him up, he will draw all men to him. So that's our goal today. We're not going to lift ourselves up. We're not going to boast in our flesh. We just came to tell you about the glory and the fame of Jesus Christ and what he's done in my life, what he's done in their lives. Uh, because we're living, walking, breathing miracles. Amen. Miracles. Amen. You know, and it's interesting that, that you shared that, that scripture. And I'm sure most of you know today is we celebrate this Palm Sunday. Uh, Easter is next weekend. And it's my favorite holiday because of the significance. And not only that Jesus rose from the dead, but he gave me an opportunity to have that spirit inside of me so that I could be resurrected Amen. back to life as well. And that's just so powerful. But uh, anyway, Palm Sunday... There's over 2.5 2 million people in Jerusalem when Jesus enters in on a donkey and they're waving the, psalm, uh, the palms at him and uh, he enters in and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest and they're, they're praising him. And just five days later, what we look at now is Good Friday was the day he went to death on the cross. Easter Sunday morning he rose from the grave, but a lot of those same people who were shouting on um, what we know as today, Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Hosanna, five days later, they're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And just like you said, which one are we going to be? Are we going to worship him and say, Hosanna, Hosanna, or are we going to say, crucify him and just join in with the crowd? Yes. We've got to know who Jesus is, mm -hmm. not just what we read about in here, but who he is to us. Do we have a personal relationship with him? And uh, that's really what changed my life is when I developed a real, loving, personal relationship with Christ. That's what turned my life around. It really is. Uh, many of you guys, uh, I know I've, I've talked with a couple of you, and uh, you said you've been in services with Teen Challenge before. Any, anybody not been in a service with Teen Challenge before? You have you? Okay. Uh, so you heard Pastor Donna mention uh, the cross and the switchblade and run, baby, run, but uh, where those books originated was from David Wilkerson. Uh, David Wilkerson uh, was a 26-year-old preacher. Uh, he lived in a uh, rural town in Pennsylvania. He was reading an article in, uh, I believe it was Life Magazine, uh, and as he was reading that article, he felt the call of God to, to go to New York City, and the article was about uh, several teenagers who had uh, murdered a, a handicapped individual with polio. Uh, he felt the call of God to go to New York City, and when he did, uh, this was a highly publicized trial, so he went and approached the judge's bench and, and said, hey, I want to help these young men. I want to be able to minister to them, and he was promptly removed from the courtroom, thrown out. Uh, it was days later that uh, his name was plastered in the newspaper, Crazy Davy the Preacher. <laughs> he could have very easily turned right back around and went home. You mentioned it before we even uh, started, started this service this morning about how he went to New York City and found his uh, wheels and his tires taken off of his car. It was sitting up on blocks. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of instances that happened over the course of time where David could have said, and he could have justified it because he had a reason. He could say, you know what, I'm going back home. I'm going to go back home and be with my wife because she's pregnant right now anyway. But he continued to pursue the call of God, and uh, he didn't give up, and he, he used it to relate to these young men. He said, hey, the cops don't like you. They don't like me. Maybe we can be friends. So he started to pour the love of Christ. He started to preach the word to them, and I'm sure most of you know what, what Jeremiah says. He says that word is like a hammer that makes you into the person that you need to be. So that word began to transform these young men's lives. And uh, Nikki Cruz was one of them. There were several uh, other gang members that he encountered over time. And uh, this was in 1958. In 1960 is when the first Teen Challenge Center uh, was founded. Uh, it was in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it's a place for people with life controlling issues, not, not necessarily just drugs and alcohol. We, we see people from all walks of life, different types of struggles, uh, maybe pornography, maybe gambling, maybe relationships. There's all kinds of things we could be addicted to. Can I get an amen to that this morning? Because it's so true. You know, there's so many things that we allow to come into our life, and then before you know it, it starts to control our life. 
doesn't start that way. The devil hides the price tag. He does, you know. So we got to be mindful of what we allow into our lives because it can eventually become a problem. So anyway, in 1960, uh, Brooklyn, New York, Teen Challenge was founded. Uh, today, in 2024, there are now over 215 adult and teen challenge centers in America. Now there's over uh, 1,400 centers in 125 different countries all across the globe. So we're not talking about some small little ministry that, that's just getting going. We're talking 65 plus years. And, you know, these guys, I'm sure, are tired of hearing me say this, but uh, I always feel like it's necessary to share. But look at what the obedience of one man did. David Wilkerson said yes to the call of God. He could have ignored that call. He could have turned back around and went home when times got tough, but he didn't. And I'm thankful for that today because now there's over 1,600 teen challenges across the globe. Your pastor, she was saved by the ministry of David, David Wilkerson. So we're not talking about just the people who are actually in the centers who are being affected by uh, this man's answer to the call of God. We're talking about all types of other people as well. So he had to take a step out of his comfort zone. He had to do some things that uh, he might not have necessarily enjoyed to do. But that's what following God looks like most of the time. I tell these guys all the time, you cannot change in your comfort zone. You've got to get out of that. You've got to do something different in order to receive something different. So uh, David Wilkerson, over the years, he's got on to be with the Lord now. It's been over 10 years since he passed. He was actually uh, hit, hit on by a semi-truck, and he, he passed away. Uh, that, was, that was quite some time ago. I want to say 10, 12 years, maybe 2011. But uh, anyway... He, his legacy still lives on. Out of those 215 adult and teen challenge centers in America, uh, we've been recognized as one of the top three. We don't know if we're one, two, or three. They won't tell us, but we do know that we're in the top three. So, you know, that's that's something good that's happening in your area. You know, we're, we're seeing people set free. We're seeing people delivered. We're seeing the power of God move in people's lives. We see healing happen on our campus. Not long ago, there was a young man healed of hepatitis C on our campus. We have the blood, blood work to prove it. So there's, there's no other answer to that other than the name of Jesus. Uh, so what we do at Adult and Teen Challenge, we're not your typical quote-unquote rehab. We don't necessarily believe drugs or alcohol are the real problem. We believe that it goes much deeper than that. And it's not like somebody just wakes up one day and becomes a drug addict. Whether it's a series of events, whether it's compromises over time, and then eventually it becomes, again, that life-controlling Issues. So we don't teach them NA. We don't teach them AA. We don't teach them the 12-step program. We don't teach. We don't give them Suboxone or Methadone. We teach them how to have a relationship with Christ, and we believe that through a relationship with Christ, true healing can happen. Amen. And you're going to hear that here in just a few minutes, because that's what makes the difference. Um, so we don't get them when they come in and set them in a circle and say, "My name's James, and I'm a drug addict." That's not what we do. Because, and you were sharing your, a, a portion of your testimony uh, with me earlier, and something you said really really resonated with me, and, it, and it's true, it's, it's a proverb. So a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You know, so we got to be careful what we tell ourselves. We call ourselves failures, and we are a failure. That's what the Word of God says. Amen. But I don't choose to be defined as a drug addict today. Amen. I choose to be defined on who God says that I am. Amen. And that's a child of God. Amen. And that's accepted. Amen. That's been set free, delivered. You know, and I could go on and on and on. But anyway, so we give them hope. We say, look, man, you, you don't have to be a drug addict. You don't have to wear a label that, that, that says that. You, you can be set free, and this doesn't have to define who you are. Thank God. We've all done some things in our past we are proud of. Amen? Amen. 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 So, you know, the same grace that a drug addict needs is the same grace as the liar needs. Amen. So what we do, we teach them how to basically live all over again without that being a part of their life. We teach them how to deal with anger. We teach them how to deal with temptations. We teach them how to grow through failure, how to love and accept themselves, how to build and maintain better relationships, how to develop new attitudes and perspectives, things like that. Uh, on our campus, we've got 30 acres. It's 13 buildings. It's kind of like a college-like campus set up. We've got uh, dorm rooms, classrooms, cafeteria, chapel. Uh, we also have shops uh, on our campus as well that we teach them some hands-on training. We have an auto shop, maintenance shop, 
Uh, we teach them classes on vehicle maintenance and home maintenance. We teach classes on money management, resume building, because there's so much more to it than being able to pass a drug test. There has to be a route that gets resolved. You know, and I, I was thinking it, it just this morning and, and even last night, you know, if, if you don't get to the root of something, it's going to come back. So, you know, and maybe, maybe this will resonate with you, but, you know, I, I think about an ingrown hair. If you just get the infection out on the top and you don't dig that hair out, what's going to happen? It's going to get infected again, more than likely. I hate ingrown hair. Don't think. Uh, but, but really, though, it, it, but it, it's just a, it's a way to put it practically because it's the same way spiritually. If we don't get to the root of the problem, then that problem is going to rise up again every single time. Um, so... Our program, uh, we offer a couple different options. We have a short term that is 90 days, and we have a long term that's uh, one year long, uh, which is our complete program. There are some who come and do 90 days, some do a year, some do two years. It just kind of kind of depends on, on the story, you know, on, on what happens. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have a very high success rate. Uh, we conducted a, a graduate survey. Uh, it was about right at two years ago, a little over two years ago uh, now. Uh, our center in Princeton has been there for almost 35 years at this point. Uh, but anyway, so we've had graduates anywhere from one month to 30 plus years who responded to this survey, and several hundred of them responded. 94% today drug and alcohol free. Wow. Praise God for that. But, but, well, that's the highest I know. Uh, and, you know, the, the state funded programs, government funded programs, last statistic that I read, one half of 1% which is one out of 200. So I'll take 188 out of 200 over one out of 200 all day, every day. Those are pretty good odds. Amen. How come it's not 200 out of 200 or 100 out of 100? Same reason why everybody in church isn't saved. They don't want to be. So they have the opportunity. 100% of each student, and that's what we call them. We call them students. They're not patients. They're not clients. They're not numbers. They're people. Amen. So... You know, <clears throat> we teach them how to have that relationship with Christ. And it's a process. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen in a month or two. It's something that happens over time. And the book of Philippians chapter 1 says that we're all a continual work in progress. Yeah. You know, so, so that's, that's what we do. Uh, and then uh, we don't necessarily consider it to be treatment. The way I like to look at it is transformation. Because that's what has to happen. Romans 12 and 2, it says, well, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And one of my favorite scriptures, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, right? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, what you've seen this morning, and I know a lot of you guys have, have came up and, and shook our hands, but what you're looking at today is not what I saw day one when they enrolled into our program. They weren't able to look me in the eye. Their faces were sunk in, black circles under their eyes. But now you see smiling young men who are healthy. Their faces are full. Their, their countenance is totally different than uh, when I first met them. But uh, we're just going to do our best to follow the Lord, and I'm going to have a few of them come share here in a minute. And... Uh, we'll just kind of see see where we go from there. Uh, Jason, come up here, man. I'll let you share. 